Let's get you started mapping in Google Earth. Tomorrow we're going to introduce strike and dip data into the map, but today we're just going to focus on line work. So here I have Google Earth open, and on here we have the KMZ file that you downloaded. It shows the map area in white and the cross section here in black. We're not going to worry about the cross section now, so I'll turn that off. And to get started, let's zoom in on this area down in the corner. So one of the things I noticed right away is there's a very prominent bed right here. So let's say I want to trace across this prominent bed, put a line in there, my first line. So what you may be tempted to do is we'll choose a line up here, so to click across this bed like so, we can actually do a much better job than that. So whenever we're drawing lines like this, we want to zoom in and really focus on tracing the contact. And the reason we do that is we can capture things like this, like the law of V's as we're moving across. You also notice right here we have this large pediment area. So if I zoom in and, and tilt it, you can see it's the surface and eroded the top of these rocks and deposited this probably an old alluvial fan or fluvial terrace sitting on there. And we can draw an outline on that. We'll, we'll come back to that in a second. For right now I want to focus more on this line. So instead of just drawing it straight across, here I'm going to follow contours and right here I see there's a big a big jump so what I think that is that's that's probably a fault and so what I want to do is get rid of the rest of this line so that's another tidbit is don't draw your lines too long it's better to draw several small lines than it is one big line so I'm going to erase the other side of that line by right clicking and then I can create a series of lines instead of one long line so I'll do another one here same bed Another one up here, pretty short. Another one down here. I'll just leave it there for now. Okay. So now I want to draw fault in. So I want another line. And I'm going to change the width to three, the color to red. Again, this is outlined in the, the symbology document for faults. And we can draw in some. Oops, I forgot. Some faults here. So I'll draw one like that. Put another one here. Um, like so. And again, I don't know exactly where these faults go right now. Right now, I'm just focusing on this one line. So I'm drawing these faults in. The orientations of this might change through time, they might connect up other places. As I zoom down into this bed, I can see that this one also looks like it's offset there. So maybe I'd want to extend that line through there. That's one possibility. But for now, I'll just leave it, leave it like this. All right, so we have some faults. We have a bed, uh, the base of this bed. Then I'll probably go in and draw a line for the top of that bed as well. Um, but now let's return to our, our sort of quaternary area that we want to out. So this one, it's a line weight of one, line weight of one, and the color is yellow. So I'm gonna change that real quick. Sorry, it's off your, off your screen. So I've changed that to yellow. I'll change this back to one. And again, you might be tempted to sort of click through and outline it and you'd say, okay, I see sort of the brown colors and maybe it looks something like that. Click, 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 click. All right. <clears throat> and that's, that's what we want you to do in general, but that's also not a very good job. And what we can do is we want to zoom in and look at these lines from multiple angles. So this part looks okay. I could go through and, and clean that up, make that a little closer. But then down here, you can see it's diving way down, way down the hillside. I also see some areas up here. We see some red. And some white that's actual outcrop, so that we don't want to include that in quaternary. Um, over here in this gully, I think those are probably outcrops in there. You can see this is dipping way down. So this is part of the thing we'd want to go back and edit. So we can do that really quick. So here, rather than dipping down into this gully, I think maybe we want to keep this up a little bit higher. We can erase some of these other some of these other Here again, dipping down in the scully. I think we can really avoid that. All right, if we 
take a look at our line now. Does a much better job staying up higher. So that's probably capturing a true pediment surface there. Okay, well that's it for now. That's enough to get you started. So again, you'll change the white line to a different color once you've decided on which unit it is, or what you think the unit is. Um, and then over here, there's a few different ways to organize this. If you want to, you can rename these. Call that quaternary. You can call these faults. Um, you don't have to. You can leave them unlabeled. Uh, another thing you might want to do is you can add a new folder. So here we can call this one unit one for our white line. And if we wanted to, we could add all of our things, our white lines into unit one. So there's just ways to help keep it organized. Once you're, you're done or once you're at a saving point, go up here to your, your exercise, right click, save place as, you can type in your, your name. And save it. And then at the end of the day, you don't have to complete it all. But what you do complete, send us as sort of your first draft of your map, and we'll take a look at it.